Hi, it's uh, Eric Cole here again with the Design Studio for Community Solutions. I'm very thrilled to be back with you today to talk to some more um, folks that are in and around our world uh, as we work on the Maryvale One Square Mile initiative. So I'm very, very pleased today to have um, with us uh, two of our team um, who ironically, I've still not met in person, right? Because we've all been um, virtual for so long. Um, but uh, I'd like to introduce you to uh, Maria Berenberg. Hi, Maria. Hello. How are you? <laughs> nice here. Thanks for hosting. Sure. Glad to have you. And then I also want to introduce you to uh, Leticia Lowry Garcilazzo. Hi, Leticia. Hi, everyone. How are you, Eric? And thank you for having us. Sure. No, it's great. Glad you're here and with us. Um, so uh, Leticia and Maria uh, work with uh, our team at the design studio. Um, they are both AmeriCorps Vistas who uh, will spend a little bit around a year working um, with us, but then also working um, with community partners uh, in kind of an interesting setup um, of how we um, do our work at the design studio. Our Vista kind of connection is through an office in the School of Social Work, the Office of Gender-Based Violence. And um, part of the, the work that, and the way it's set up is that we're really, in, in doing our work in the Maryvale community, we're also trying to carry forward um, some of the messaging and then uh, kind of uh, community scaffolding around uh, fighting gender-based violence as well. And so um, this is a great, Kind of a relationship that we have um, with those folks that are also that school of social work is also in our watts college so um really exciting um and then uh in each case uh, maria and leticia are also working with additional um partners in the community but i will not steal <laughs> your thunder <laughs> um and jump right in if that's okay um I think you said, Maria, you would go first, but I may have gotten that wrong, so I hope that's okay. Um, but Maria, do tell us a little bit uh, about um, your work, and then uh, how did you kind of get started doing um, the kind of work that you do now and have done uh, in your career? Sure, yeah. So I guess I'll start from the beginning. Um, I mean, I graduated in 2019 with a degree in um, education with a concentration in support services and in psychology. And then right after that, I actually did an AmeriCorps term before this term um, and worked at a community center with youth. So kind of taking on that mentor role. Um, but yeah, what I really love doing like direct engagement, community work. Um, I don't like being too far removed from the community and um, so yeah, that's also what, I mean, directed me towards this role, what drew me towards the design studio was their approach um, that they take in working with communities um, and really centering those communities, the community voice. Um, so yeah, I was really drawn to the approach. And another thing was like taking this broad perspective of looking at, you know, education, youth development, economic development, um, public health, safety, affordability, accessibility, all of these things. So they don't occur in isolation um, and seeing them like within their context um, has been, I mean, it's helped me learn a lot um, and see how they're all connected with one another. Um, so yeah. That's kind of my background. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, hearing you say um, in isolation, <laughs> but also your, um, you know, kind of willingness and desire to be out in the community. What an interesting time <laughs> to be joining us when, um, you know, our capabilities are not as, uh, we're not as able to be out in the community. So, um, uh, that's a that's it. We're so glad you're here and with us, and hopefully that will change as we go forward too. Um, so, Leticia, I'm going to ask you the same question: kind of, what are you working on? And then, you know, kind of, how did you get here? 
Okay, so um, I'm from Mexico City and I only have eight years living here in the United States. I arrived to a really, um, you, could, you could say like the poorest town in the United States that is Bronzeville, Texas. Um, from there, I uh, start working as, I'm industrial designer. I got my degree from the University uh, Autonoma Metropolitana from Mexico City. Um, and I start working in good crafters, but I always have that kind of need to fulfill some social interests. And I always get kind of curious about, you know, gender violence um, as a female, as Mexican, you know, as a minority here in the United States, because I'm Mexican. Um, you always see this bottom line and you always have this kind of like funny looks or you know, you, you, you see the, the discrepancies in the government and you see the discrepancies in, in the way of living, et cetera. So I start seeing a lot of like migrants and I live really close walking distance from the Rio Bravo or the Rio Grande. Um, so that's something that always got in me and I always want to do something. So I know this is not relevant at all, but I started studying art. I started doing my master's in fine arts at the University of Texas, Rio Grande Valley. And I have the support of my mentor that is Rahel Ful Sufi. And she's an Iranian um, artist. So she mentored me and Tim Goncharov too. He's one of my mentors too. And they, they do different real different work, but that kind of inclined me to, to the, you know, sometimes you need guidance to fulfill your goals. So they, they guide me really well and, and other, other professors too, right? To find my voice. So with them, I start actually working with ceramics and I start focusing my work into fighting for gender-based, uh, mostly women, um, violence and femicide. So I start acknowledging femicide with my work, um, with my ceramic vessels. I use my ceramics as vessels to, to encourage or to present those souls that mm -hmm. have been taken by violence. Mm -hmm. So we, my husband works, um, in Bali Interfaith in, in, in Texas, but they have to move here with the industrial area foundations. So we, we moved actually in COVID time. So it was really harsh because we didn't stop. We just drew and we slept in the car and we just came back here, it's 20, 20 something hours. And I arrived here and I was actually looking for an opportunity because actually right now the government, everything is kind of close. Work is close, like finding an opportunity is kind of harsh right now. So I didn't know really well about AmeriCorps until I, you know, like I started looking and I found this, uh, the gender-based office and that they have this position to us um, focusing on violence, uh, you know, like, like, um, advocacy for women, for victims of violence, for survivors of violence. And it was not only for women, it was only it was also for men, for for you know gender, not gender based, etc. So that was actually my first interest. So I apply and I have the opportunity to work uh, with them. And I was really interested because you know it's something that had always grabbed my passion and it is something that you are doing or you're you're putting your your um i don't know your your talents to work mm -hmm. for the yeah. people yeah and that's how i arrived with you guys because i didn't even know that i was part of the design studio <laughs> and i was like oh, okay cool. so yeah it is really really interesting and i'm working right now with chicanos por la causa de colores that is my base um um site Mm -hmm. And really cool to work with Marina Jusop and all the team mm -hmm. to to work for the people. And mostly it's, it's really cool because it's just mostly Hispanic, Latinos, and you know, I'm Mexican. So I'm like, ah, I don't know, it's like I don't know, I'm really blessed to to be working with you all. Sorry, oh, my no. is really long. No, it's great. No, it was fantastic. I really um I really appreciate it. You both really um, hit this next question in what you've already talked about, but I'd, I'd love to ask you 
a bit more. Um, you know, when we do our work, we always talk about with the um, design studio, kind of centering solutions on um, where communities come from, who communities are, that sort of thing. So I'd love um, to think about, you know, in your work, um, how do you approach uh, the community uh, with what you're doing? So Maria, I'm going to, I mean, Leticia, I'm going to go back to you and then we'll come back to Maria. So, okay. Um, my work or, or work into the community, I think is really important. And mostly because, you know, sometimes we need to, we need organizations. We need organizations and we need to central or sometimes central the power that, that a community have in organizations because these organizations can reach um, or, or can be a, a, an arm to fulfill some needs in the community. So I think the, the work that the design studio does for these communities is really important, mostly because you're working in gardening, you're working to reach young people, you're working like to bring a community that is really in need of, of resources through your work. And I think this work is really important, mostly because you're, you're I mean, it's like a synergy, right? You work with the community, the community works with you, and they learn or we learn from each other by the needs of each other. So we bring this, these needs and we maybe present these needs in maybe grants. And these mm. grants goes mm. to maybe the, the city of Phoenix, or maybe we go in a private grants or whatever. I don't know, whichever grant it, it's offered to us. And we work with them for the benefit of the community. And maybe the city didn't even know about these problems and maybe they're willing to give maybe more money or maybe more you know, private or public or et cetera. To, to bring more help and more approaches and more resources to the community. And I think the work that, that you know, the design studio does is really important because it's not centered only for, for one focus that is just get a name to, to, the, to the design studio. It is for the community. And I think that is a pride that, that as members of the design studio we have because it's for the community. That's great. That's great. I love what you said about um, what we learn. I mean, I, I often feel like we learn as much or maybe more <laughs> from our engagement in the community as, you know, somebody that we're, you know, somebody we're working with as well. We have a, you know, I think we've got a position that is positioning that's uh, pretty unique um, to, to do some of that. That's great. Um, so Maria, what about you in terms of working with the community? So the question was the approach that I take. Yeah, just kind of, you know, it, it, we talk about, you know, meeting community members where they are and co-designing solutions, you know, kind of how does that, how do you do that? Yeah, I mean, absolutely exactly how you said it. Um, yeah, just definitely developing that trust and rapport with the community. Um, you know, in my case, recognizing that being aware that I'm an outsider in this community, recognizing my privilege and my positionality is super important. Um, and just, yeah, also, I think the language around it is important, seeing the community members as actors, not like, oh, we're imposing this thing and we're the actors creating the solutions. No, it is coming from the community. So yeah, just having that perspective um, seeing, I like to see it, think of it as like, we're taking this mediator role um, in connecting the community to resources that we may have at ASU, um, stuff like that. Yeah, so that's definitely the that's awesome that yeah. I think. No, that's great, that's great. Um, so, you know, we talked a little bit about how, you know, we've, we've all, the three of us have never met in person. Hopefully that'll change eventually. Um, but in terms of kind of, you know, the changes, uh, and you both talked about it because you both, I think, you know, did major, you know, made major life moves uh, during the pandemic. Um, but one thing we like, you know, we've been talking to folks about is kind of how have things adapted for you? 
uh, work or personally um, with, you know, what's going on with the, the pandemic and the need to social distance and add precautions that keep everybody safe. Uh, oh, uh, let's see, whose turn is it? Maria, it's your turn. <laughs> okay, yeah, hello. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I mean, it, fortunately we have the ability um, to work remotely. So, you know, we've been able to do that. It's definitely difficult um, in staying connected. And, you know, I mean, for me, I you know, took a trip out to Maryville, um, the community that we're working in, and um, just trying to grab at opportunities to be engaged with the community, um, visit the different sites. So that's kind of what I've been doing to stay connected. Um, yeah. Um, that's I, cool. I, that's, that's cool. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> well, it was, I mean, for me, it has been really hard. I was a professor in Texas. And here, you know, like, I'm used to, to hang out with people and used to, to always be around people. And, you know, home was to arrive on wine and, you know, have a conversation, et cetera. And, you know, like the weekends were the weekends that we spent with the family and it was all yeah. good, you know. And right now it's really hard because, um, you know, family is working from home. And you, your dynamics, everything just change. And um, I have been, um, I guess, a privilege because I have a site and I have an office. And when it's sometimes safe, we, I have the opportunity to leave the house and go to the office. And it's, it's in the heart of Maryville community. So as, as, Mariah, as Maria said, I have, I have had the opportunity to drive around Maryville and, you know, some, go some sites and, you know, take outs and, and see the scenery over there. And, you know, it's like driving sometimes in Mexico. I mean, sometimes it's like you never left the border, you know? And well, with some differences, but it's, I just gonna say that it's kind of sad to see the privilege that we live in because you drive and you drive and passing the 17, you see how forgiven, how, how forgotten is that community. And it's really sad because I mean, the same resources that the city or, 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 or people from living mostly in center Phoenix have, I think they should be the same resources that this community should have. And that is kind of the sad part to see how sometimes the, the, the community do not have the same, you know, resources or how for, forgotten it is. Depends on the streets that you are. And, and from COVID that has increased because, you know, like some people, don't have the same resources that other people have and being in the same house or being in the patio or having i just gonna say it this like being in a house with kids i don't have kids but being in a house with kids and teaching them and then if you're a mom and you have to work i mean you have like a three three jobs in in one sitting you know and i think i think COVID has been hard but as a person that is really hyper, for me, the only thing had that had bring maybe some rest is the part that you can still be able to maybe go to the mountains or go to some exercise around the block. But when it was hot, <laughs> it was high, and you don't have any treadmills or anything like that, mm -hmm. I can imagine what those mothers what those people do don't have any more resources. And like us, we're just in closer in our houses, making crazy ideas, you know, and the only escape is a computer or maybe your kids or maybe your pets or I don't know. So it has been really hard. I'm going to lie. <laughs> but you, just, you just go with the flow. It's true. It's true. And I mean, I just, you know, you're both so right on about, 
the privilege, I mean, you know, I feel that way. I feel very privileged to have be employed, right? To um, have some of the tools and options to do, be productive, but also, um, you know, not have to expose myself or my family. But, um, but that still doesn't mean it's easy on any of us. I think we're all exhausted. Um, also, I mean, Leticia, your points around, um, you know, Maryvale and, and, you know, kind of the equity of resources and opportunities that are out there, that was really striking to me also when, when I first um, started going out there and doing this work. It's just, and, you know, we even had conversations with, um, you know, elected with, uh, officials and elected government folks that say, yeah, there's not as many resources as there should be that are um, going to communities like that. And when you have such a, you have a broad valley, right? And you do have discrepancies between some, a lot of communities. And, um, you yeah, know, and sometimes you see those discrepancies more in poorer or minority communities than in the other ones, right? And it is not about only the government. It's about, you know, it's a lot of scales, tax That's true. practice and, Etc. So, but no, you know, that's why the, the, the design studio it's really important because you are trying to reach those needs in yeah. our work. I think that matters. I don't know. Yeah. Well, and I, I think what we see, and you all see it, but you'll see it more when we're able to be kind of back out am amongst the community is just the, the desire and the will and the energy um, to rectify some of that. Um, those challenges, it exists um, in Maryvale among the folks, you know, they're, they're very motivated and, and interested just, um, you know, trying to figure out how to come together and, and um, you know, create political power to make some of those changes. So um, I think, you know, all the work we saw in this, the election this year um, shows what can happen, um, you know, when folks do come together and organize. So it's pretty, pretty, uh, it's pretty amazing. Um, okay, so one last question, and um, this is my favorite because I learn something every time we do it. Um, what is one tip or, um, you know, hack, life hack, or, you know, thing you've come up with during uh, quarantine and, and uh, uh, COVID, the COVID-19 period that you would like to share with others? Um, and Leticia, you're going to get to go first. Ouch. Okay. Uh, like I said, like in my, uh, my super long answer in the other one, but I think for me, mostly when it was super hot and I didn't have any like a treadmill or anything, I cannot run inside. That is not cool for me. I hate it. But the thing that I tried to do, it was just waking up in the mornings and put my mat and try to do some exercise. I don't care if you're good or not about it. You just try, you know, you just sit in there and follow in some YouTube, maybe tutorials or yoga or your favorite exercise, even dancing, just just move through the flow. If you're a person to like to, to dance or things like that and sing alone and all that stuff, I think if you do one hour of that, it makes your, you know, your estamine and everything makes you like, woo! <laughs> I don't know. That was something that for me was working. And I danced by myself. I, I didn't even care if the neighbors hear me or see me. It was my own sanity. So, yeah. they, they, you know, <laughs> that that's my my point of advice, I guess. That's great. That's, that's, that's great. <laughs> I love it. All right, Maria, what about you? Um... So for me, it's really like creating a sense of structure by, you know, scheduling in breaks, um, time to cook, scheduling in evening walks, stuff like that. It can be really easy to fall into a state of like meh if you're not intentional about it and in, in scheduling in these things. Um, yeah, time away from the screen is really big like being zoomed out is like really it's really a thing that exhaustion totally. um yeah but for me going outside on walks like feeling a sense of connection to nature and even just like seeing people out in the park you know playing and stuff like that really makes me feel a little more connected 
to the community. Um, I also really love to cook. I love food. So for me, going to the farmer's markets, talking to locals, you know, is really awesome. And I get to try new local foods and test that out with my cooking. So that's been really fun to experiment in that way. But yeah, just finding ways to re-energize and recenter like during your work day is super important. Wow. I mean, I feel like going into this, I would have not had either of your answers, but I feel like they both are critical to me now, right? Like finding time to exercise, to get your brain out of the screen. But then the routine thing, the routine thing has become really, really important for me that I um, was not that person <laughs> before this. I mean, I, I followed the routine because I kind of had to, but having to make our own is, um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a good thing. I like that. I think that's great. I just um, want to add something to Maria. That's really true. I mean, the structure, like what she said about you need to be intentional about making an agenda and follow your schedule. I think that is really hardcore. And that's a really cool thing that she mentioned because if you're not intentional about it, you're just gonna be lost in time. And it happens to me. I'm, I always hate agendas. I saw an agenda and I was like, oh, whatever. I always have my schedule in my head and I was going all with the flow and blah, 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 you know, because you live in your work and, and you were always by class and class and class. But now I have to be super intentional of having an hour to wake up. And like she mentioned, like have your structure, have your, your time for eating, your time for this. I think you need to be super intentional about it because if not, you just, I don't know. You, I have been depressed too. So it's really hard to keep waking up. And even though you don't have a meeting at eight, you need to wake up at six or seven and keep going. <laughs> so yeah, Maria, that thing, you, you, you nail it. That's great. I mean, that's totally true. It'll be interesting when we fin. well, whenever, to go back and see like your, your answers, you know, today versus what other people on our team said back in June or July. And then what we say, you know, in a, in a couple of months, I will tell you this, I was in a kind of low spot when we started this morning and I'm more energized now having talked to both of you. So thank you. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Um, well, again, thanks so much for taking the time uh, to do this today. And uh, for everybody watching, uh, we'll, it's been a bit since we did one of these. We'll do another one uh, coming up soon. So thanks for joining us.